very, very special sister. Let's give a very warm round of applause for Emily. You guys are really loud from up here. You guys are loud in there, but up here, it's very loud. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna pretend like we're all at, co at a coffee shop and that I'm just telling you guys things. So I'm a little less nervous. And yeah, so let's pray and we'll go from there. <laughs> uh, okay. Dear Lord, I just, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this church. Um, I thank you for Wow, the stories you have woven through this church, Lord, and I thank you that I get to be a part of it, God. I just ask that you pour out your words through my mouth. You've written my story, Lord. Use me as your vessel. Lord, I thank you for all the blessings. And Lord, may I just tell of your glory, your blessings, your overwhelming mercy and grace that has been poured out through my life. And just thank you. Okay, let's go. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jesus. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I'm like genuinely shaking, but I was always told that nervousness and excitement is the same thing, and now I can't unlock my phone. There we go, okay. Uh, so we're gonna go, well, this is excitement, this is not nervousness. I'm excited to tell you guys. <laughs> okay, um, so I got a really exciting surprise on Thursday. My best friend was from college was flying out to see me for my testimony, I was so, so excited. And she is on the airport's bus, she comes, and the first one out of the bus was not my best friend, it was my mom. <laughs> and I had no idea. And my mom and my best friend are here to see my testimony today, so. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I was born in LA. I was raised in a medium-sized town in the country of Oregon. Um, I grew up hunting, fishing, camping, uh, shooting, archery, all that jazz. Um, I had the privilege of being raised in a Christian family. I have two younger brothers and two very loving parents. Um, I thank God for that. I, it's such a privilege and an honor, and um, I'm very much a family person because of that. I love it. Uh, I never went to public school and was always homeschooled or attended private school, and I attended the same church my entire life up until college, and I served there since I was 11 years old, starting in the children's ministry. Uh, my coming to Christ moment was really beautiful and simple. Uh, I was in first grade at a Christian school, and six years old, and my teacher told us about the gospel, and I remember in that moment that I just needed that. I didn't, I didn't know exactly why I needed it, but that thing, I knew my parents talked about it, I needed it. So I accepted Jesus in my heart. I'm still in contact with my teacher. She still prays for me, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, so from that point, my faith was uh, starting to become real. My faith was very much instilled in me um, by my parents. And as I went to high school, I started to make it my own. Um, I was a bit of a goody two-shoes, a bit of a teacher's pet, but I honestly... <laughs> I honestly just wanted to love Jesus the best I could. And, you know, that had a little bit of legalism, a little bit of um, a little bit of just my desire to be the good one mixed in there. But genuinely, I wanted to follow the Lord. Um, I remember trying to force a spiritual moment. I remember trying to understand who God was, even understand why my dad and my mom would cry during church. But no matter how much I tried, I couldn't understand. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out fully. And honestly, the hardest, life, hardest thing in my life at that time was losing my grandma and maybe being misunderstood in high school. So we, we had a pretty, a really safe, beautiful growing up. It was honestly, man, it was good. It was really beautiful. Um, I was scared of everything. <laughs> I was scared of leaving the States, afraid to do the wrong thing. I cried about maybe becoming an alcoholic or drug addict one day. Uh, that, did, that didn't happen, by the way, so... <laughs> But, uh, you know, we were, we were very scared of everything. And so I was even scared of, like, being like, Lord, I don't want to go out of the country. I don't want to go be a missionary. I don't want to do anything like that. Well, here I am in South Korea. So um, I would like to, what Chris said today during church really resonated with me with how I was raised. It was very much my family was a rock. My dad built a foundation. My mom and dad together built a foundation. 
uh, just really on the Lord. And so this next part of my life, I'm going to preface it with something that the Lord put on my heart, and it was God is faithful, and he wastes nothing, nothing at all. He doesn't, he doesn't waste it. So please bear with me with this part. So my senior year of high school, um, a few months before I graduated, my dad, my two brothers, a friend of my brother's, our dog, were headed back home from duck hunting um, in the mountains. And my dad wanted to teach my brother, uh, who had his permit, how to drive home in the mountains highway. It was something we all had to learn. We all did it, including me. And uh, through my brother trying to pass a semi-truck, a big hauling truck, and not being able to, our SU the, the SUV overcorrected and rolled across the highway and my dad's passenger corner um, hit first on that ground. The rolling stopped right before a ditch in the middle of a field, which um, upright, and everyone was able to get out of the car and was alive except my dad. My dad had suffered a blunt force head trauma and passed away on sight. My mom and I found out after a few hours of getting to my brother's in the emergency room by the chaplain there, uh, two state troopers, and you know, the conversation, ma'am, your husband didn't make it. <sighs> Can't look at my mom. <laughs> um, that is where my comfortable life changed forever, and my family and I made a choice. My mom sat us down and said, we have two choices. We either let the enemy win and we roll over and we're done, or we believe God is who he says he is. And from that, from that point on, me and my brothers looked at my mom and said, okay, God is who he says he is. We were without a leader, we were without my dad, but we had God. Um, so my family of four, my new family of four moved forward. Um, I would like to tell you this to ease your guys' hearts. My brothers are doing well, even the one who was driving. He is doing very well. Our dog who was in the car, she broke her leg in four places because she was shot out of the car. Um, but she healed up and she lived another uh, six years and was the best therapy dog. My youngest brother is doing well as well and my brother's best friend. They walked away with nothing, guys. My brother who was driving had only scratches on his hand. My youngest brother just chipped his heel plate. The other boy in the car, nobody should have walked away from that car. I want you to it was, the police officer said no one should see that car again. My phone locked me out. I apologize. Um, so uh, in, in that season was very dark and heavy and my faith had to get real very quickly because God had to show up and I had to believe he was who he said he was. And so every night, even when I cried myself to sleep, God showed up. When I felt like the world was ending, he was there. And honestly, I had a lot of anger, confusing emotions, brokenness. But in Psalms 34, 18, where it says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Man, you read that verse when you're in a good time, you're like, yeah, that's great. You read it when you're brokenhearted, you're like, I need that. And it hits very different. He's there. He's sitting with you. He's holding you, comforting you over, over and over. Um, so my faith became real in that season, and it was very hard, very hard. Please don't think it's easy, but um, continuing on, my life went to the first year of college in L.A. at Master's University, John MacArthur's college, um, and uh, then I transferred back to Oregon uh, to study at George Fox University to study art where I met Abby. That's where we met, and through GFU somehow, though I didn't exactly want to in the beginning, I ended up staying abroad in Korea for the first time for six months at Korea University. <laughs> During my second weekend in Korea and on my dad's second death anniversary, his homegoing day, uh, I met uh, Yilin Sang, who became a mentor and had a huge, huge impact on my life. My season in Korea was the first time removing me from my comfort zone, my family. And so that was me realizing, uh, just we're having me in Jesus time, realizing my anger, my hurt, my brokenness, and that God could handle it all. No matter how angry or broken I felt, he constantly poured out his love. Um, I headed back home to the States. I didn't want to leave though. And those six months totally got a hold of me and now I'm here again. Um, a few months later, my mom got remarried to a high school classmate who, funny enough, has the same name as my dad, Jeff. <laughs> mom, you really, you really do well. You pick him. You pick him. 
But but honestly, the Lord like did did amazing because I never thought I would have another father figure who would love me. I thought once one parent's gone, who what parent wants to deal with an adult kid, you know? And uh, but man, the Lord did not stop and He did not hold back because I don't call him Jeff; I call him Jefe. <laughs> <laughs> Which those of you who know Spanish, that means boss. So, and he is the sassiest, most Jesus-loving man I know, and um, he loves Jesus. He loves my mom so well, and he pours out on us kids, uh, and I, I love him, and I think of him like a father figure. Never thought I'd ever say that. Uh, and so I, I get to tell people I was blessed with two amazing dads, and not for the reasons people think. Um, so, you know, just... <laughs> oh, good. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, there's that. Um, my senior year of college, uh, life got a lot harder, actually, um, or just, I guess, piled on top of. Um, two weeks before my senior year of college, we got a call that my cousin Parker, we were the best of buddies, man, we, we were tight, uh, had a drowning accident, and he passed away a few days later, and that was the biggest uh, punch in the stomach to me. I had a lot of arguments with the Lord that this was not fair, it was too soon. Um, about a month later, we were told my grandpa, my dad's dad, had stage four lymphoma cancer. Two months after that, I got a call from uh, my mentor, Yilin Sang, who had walked really closely with me through Parker's death. I uh, had been killed in a drunk driving accident walking home in Korea. Um, she, she has a bench in Seoul Forest. I go there sometimes, bring her flowers. I mean, she's not there. She's in heaven. She's, she loved Jesus a lot, man. She, yeah, wow. Um, and about three months later, my grandpa passed away uh, from cancer, and his memorial service was held on my 22nd birthday. Uh, so it was, a bit, it was a bit of a heavy year, he heavy six months, a little bit of a heavy six months, a lot of it. Um, and I kept asking God a lot of times, how much more are you going to give me? How much more? I can't possibly handle any more. I'm going to break if you keep putting on any more. And there were a lot of other really hard things that happened that year. Uh, and so many times I literally felt like my world was falling apart. And I would like kind of lay on the bathroom floor and just cry because I didn't know what else to do. I had to graduate college somehow. I had to be there for my family and friends who were grieving. Um, and I felt the Lord pick me up and carry me every single time. I was not angry at the Lord at this point. I knew where my foundation was. I know what death is. I know it is not God causing pain to me. I know where people are, where my people are. Um, but I was tired and weary. And uh, my exhaustion, I could only lean on him. Not even really lean. I just kind of like, you know, crumpled. Like that kid that's just like, oh. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You can laugh at that one. <laughs> um, so really during that season, he showed me that no matter what you go through, the entire world can fall away and I will be there. You, you go through anything. I'm right there. And I have such a courage that if my mom passes away, my best friends pass away, this world pass away, I pass away. The Lord's got it. There, even death does not separate us from the safety of the Lord. Um, so somehow I graduated uh, by the grace of the God and wonderful teachers who said, you cannot turn that in. Um, so uh, there are many, actually, I almost didn't graduate, but that's a different story. So, and there are many other crazy things that happen. We don't have time for that. You want to have time for that? We're going to go coffee. So we can do that. Um, so I graduate. I go home. I don't have any plans. I tried to come to Korea, and the Lord kept saying no. So uh, a second grade teaching position was dropped in my lap, and it was a small Christian school. And um, I taught there for two years. I taught everything from kindergarten to 12th grade, even math. I'm not sure how I did that one. Um, don't ask the artist to teach math. I feel like that's a general rule. But I don't know. Um, but Korea had just, just kept staying in my heart. I kept, I kept praying about it. I can't tell you how many times I would watch videos of Korea and be like, I miss that. I can't go there. I miss that. I can't go there. And 
one, because of Yi Lin, her spot was here. I didn't get to go to the memorial service. It was during COVID. Um, and a two, because my cousin who passed away, his heart was for Thailand, mine was for Korea. We were going to be Asia, missionary, something buddies. And his last question, a few days before he passed, he was like, Em, when are you going to Korea? That was, that was like our last conversation. And uh, I feel like I wanted to honor that. Um, also, I just love it here for thank the Lord. Um, so after a lot of questioning the Lord, uh, is Korea even on the table? And after a lot of disappointments and my own mistakes, I was able to come here last fall and study at Yonsei Korean Language Academy. I even tested into level three. Um, that's like 50%. That's like 50% in there. Um, and within the first month, I was ready to find a church. This is where you guys come in. <laughs> um, i had been watching Saving Grace through Zero because I was using Zero to study Korean um, because he, <laughs> he, was, he was posting devotionals. And I was like, I got to learn these Christian, Christian Korean lingo. I didn't study them. I just kept screenshotting them, and they piled up. But um, <laughs> Sorry, Zero. <laughs> um, but I, was, I would watch PP's things, and I would think wow, that's uh, a little intense. And I would want to really uh, argue with it and like not agree. And then by the end, he would bring it around. And I'm like, dang it, I have to agree. That's right. That's biblically sound. And so I just, he scared me a little bit in the beginning. But I, I love you, Phoebe. I love listening to you now. So um, I made a list of other churches and I came here by myself and it, I was very confused a little bit because everybody was screaming so much. And... <laughs> I'm not from a charismatic background. I feel like I should clarify that. Um, and so, uh, where did I go? Okay. Um, so I remember I left that day and I sent voice messages to my mom because she was sleeping. And I'm like, Mom, they're so loud. And there, there was tongue speaking. And I don't know, that was only the second time I heard that. I didn't even know what it was. And the, her response was, they love Jesus so much they can't contain it. <laughs> and I can't agree more because coming here I actually was like do I love Jesus? I think we need to get on this a little bit more. These people love him so much I want to join them in that um, so uh, I was put in Skylar's cell for the first time and I think I told them every week how blessed I was to be a part of the community and um, <laughs> I was always so shocked that I, as the extroverted me, get to be friends with everybody. You just get to talk to anybody and you could be friends. Uh, that was beautiful. Uh, it really was an answer to prayer. And this entire church has become an answer to prayer. And my life has become an answer to prayer. And um, my heart towards the Lord has gotten bigger. I've gotten hungrier. I have been able to really pursue walking in holiness and deeply falling in love with the Lord. And... Uh, this last week's reading in Psalm 4814, it said, For this God is our God forever and ever, and he will be our guide even to the end of the age. And that is who God is. I feel like I don't have enough time to tell you all the things that God has done in my life. <laughs> and if you want to hear it, you know, let's go grab coffee. And But that, that's uh, what I know. The earth could fall away. I could bury everyone. Uh, I could have everyone leave me, yet he is still good. And I would not trade one moment of my suffering for anything because I got to walk with the Lord. And he is faithful, and he wastes nothing, and suffering is not meaningless. Uh, I know we don't have forever. Um, I've been to more funerals for people considered too young to die. So we don't have time to be perfect but to be genuine. I love when Fifi says that. Um, and, you know, with the Lord and our relationships. So, uh, man... Uh, God is good, and uh, I'm so thankful for this church. I'm thankful for every one of you. I'm thankful for all of Pastor Paul's uplifting sermons and, and just the encouragement and getting to go to coffee and lunches and dinners and get to know people who are my brothers and sisters in Christ. So thank you all. As if, you, if you notice, I usually keep this time very short because, you know, it's, it, but I have a long list for you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, man. I mean, you know, man, you know, um, Emily, 
she's so encouraging. She's always uplifting and positive. And, um, you know, my wife and I, we had dinner, uh, lunch, lunch, was it dinner or lunch? It was dinner, it was dinner uh, a couple months ago. And we're so encouraged by her story. And man, you come from a great family, man. Like, like lineage of like, like, like inheritance of faith. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, wow, man. Praise God. You know, I think, I think our church attracts many people like that, you know. People, people with long lineage of faith come to saving grace. And we're so grateful for you. And you're so dedicated and you, you serve so well, yeah. right? Yeah, and uh, your mom is beautiful and your, your, your friend's beautiful too. You thank you. Welcome to Saving Grace, all right? Praise God, amen? All right, we love you. We love you, Emily. All right. Oh, David, oh, David, oh, David. Psalm 91, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in Emily's life. We thank you for her life and her trust in you, God. Thank you for her kindred spirit. We thank you for her upbringing. We thank you for her parents and, and the family of faith that she comes from. And we thank you, Lord, that she is in Korea here with us in saving grace according to your will. Thank you for your grace in all areas of her life. I pray that she will continue to abide in your shadow forever and grow in her trust in you more and more. Guide Emily's next steps in you, Lord, and let her to continue to build her life on you, our, the rock of our salvation. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 May grace.